Ooh, ooh, ooh. Damn, Ambest is a badass. Why are you so evil, girl? Why are you doing this? I need to be able to root for you. You're making it so hard. Hey guys, it's your girl Ayesha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are here with the final episode ever of Arcane Season 2. It is episode 9, which is called The Dirt Under Your Nails. So it has been a very emotional and gritty journey up until this point, but we're finally going to wrap it all up, at least for this storyline between the two sisters. But uh, last episode, we basically had Jinx decide that she wants to do something in order to stop all of this cycle of violence that doesn't seem to end. We see that um, Vi and Kate are back on track as far as their relationship and that Jace is basically calling for everybody in Zon and Piltover to fight against Ambessa and Victor to stop them from getting any further with the hex tech so that he can stop the future that he saw. So we'll have to see how this all wraps up. Um, I'm both looking forward to it, but also sad that we're here, but I'm ready to jump in. So let's do that. But just before I do, even though this is going to be the last episode for this show, I do react to a lot of great stuff here. So hopefully if you haven't already, you'll join the fam by hitting that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. So you can join me on future journeys of cool stuff and whatever else comes out from these guys, because I will definitely be watching anything else that League of Legends decides to put out for us. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Ooh, that visual with her hair out. As long as I can. We've never seen her hair out like this. I love how it also went to the symbolism of how this hex tech has changed her life so crazily. Oh, is she gonna burn down her workshop? The tear streaks. Not Silco's chair. Oh, she... She didn't burn down the bar, did she? That's Vander, too. Do you see the way the glass looked like teeth? That was amazing. All the way back to the beginning. That's the toy that started all of this. These lyrics are so Wait. haunting. I knew it. I'm like, Echo's gonna stop her. I wanna talk to you. Get out of here, Echo. I, I just... I Damn, she's intent on dying. She cut her hair off, I just realized. Wait! Damn, he has averted death like eight times now. Yeah, I'll catch my breath. See if I can talk an old friend out of blowing us up. <laughs> right? I like that the music is still playing in the background. I'm tired of talking. No! no! Jeez. You know, I, I learned from someone. At least he gets a chance to figure out how to adjust his argument each time. It's never too late to build something new. Facts. Someone worth building it for. No. Did it work this time? Please let me go. Whew! That was crazy and that was awesome. Oh my God, poor Echo. Thank God he's got good reflexes because damn, the way that boy just came back to almost die. That's nuts. Oh. And hilariously, the one person to get through to her is, is Echo. Vi couldn't do it. It kind of makes sense though. She looks up to Vi so much. Echo's actually a peer. Ooh, the eerie stillness. That's almost worse than the battle, waiting for the battle to start. Victor's at the center of all this, isn't he? With your help, Jace, yeah. If he reaches the Hex Gates. Oh, we're flipping between time here. Then we'd best stop him. Hmm. If only it was that simple. Jace already tried. Oh, there goes the tower. Why is so unnecessarily strong? How are they shielding that? That's terrifying. That person better be alive for all that work you just did. She died fighting with what she wanted. 
what she believed in, her home. Let's go. You did all you could. At least she didn't have to get molested by these weirdos out here. Damn, one thing you can say about it, best you can't say she hides behind her people. But that weapon's actually really badass. got those damn wounds that block that absorb the the hex tech and that's the problem this is a badass though she wrong as hell old little one is it i don't like the sound of that everybody get down what i think we're gonna lose this dude you hear that sound i don't like it Yep, Victor. And the way that, can we just talk about how they've been bastardizing Vander's body? Like, I'm so sick of this desecration. And the mist clear, please, I can't see. I just, I feel so sorry for Vander's body. Like, let this man rest in peace. The amount of perversion that has happened to this man's body since he died is, or almost died is gross. Work faster, Jace. Also, shouldn't Jace have gotten help? Why is he doing this by himself? Well, you're gonna be too slow and also, I think Victor's kind of like, not at all affected by Hextech. Oh God, not, no, these, not all these soldiers got the Hextech, they've got Shimmer in them too. Oh no, I had a feeling you weren't making it. Well, at least he too died the way he wanted to. I just don't think rifles are gonna cut it anymore, but appreciate your heart. He's like, steal yourself! Can you breathe well, Noxians? The noxious fumes? I'm sorry, bro. You tried. Oh, no. Hey, Caitlin, take it all those lessons that Bessa gave you! Use them, girl! I think Mr. Greeny's gonna die here, but I respect the, the hustle. Look at his eyes. Don't tell me he's not gonna go off though. Really? Maybe it's like Jay said, they're meant to lose this battle because of what he did. It is what he did, because if he hadn't killed Victor, this wouldn't have happened. You're a badass, Mbessa, but I can't cheer for you, man. This was disgusting. These people did nothing to deserve this. Oh, someone's mad that you gave the coochie up. Or she's a double agent, we'll see. I warned you of the hazards of professional entanglement. Desperation is the doorway to oblivion, child. Take your own advice, Ambessa. I did appreciate your warmth. Okay. Thank you, Mel. That's what you get, bitch. That's what you get. Mel said not on my time, mommy. You gonna kill me too? Let's do it. My daughter fight, I'm ready. Woo, Mel. That looks more badass than anything you've done, Ambessa. I'm sorry. If you care for me at all, spare them. She doesn't. Lives. Not enough. There is nothing to gain from this senseless bloodshed. Your mother doesn't think clearly, girl. The fireflies are here, baby! Oh, oh, this new look. I'm kind of vibing with it. And good luck trying to get Jinx, because she's smarter than most of y'all combined. Ooh, I like that she's got the pink for Vi. Echo. Is that you, boy? I love the hot air. Balloon. Yes, he's back. Yay! Ooh, more Zonians. Yes! Go, Savika. Take it out on him. That's right. She's like, hey, sis, I'm back. Ooh, duck. Ooh. 
That viewpoint was amazing. This is awesome! Did Ambessa literally pull a body on for shielding? Was hot, Mel! but you probably just jammed it. Woo! Thank God that shield works. Vic? Vicky? Oh, uh, no, not a Trojan horse. Victor's not even in there. Long gone. And Bessa just made sure y'all was too busy fighting them at the top. Can't argue. That's a good plan. And you've left Jace by himself, which I already said was a stupid idea. God, Victor, you look awful. I am pleased to see you again. There must be some part of you still in there. No, anymore. You killed it. Oh, not forced conversion. This is... Oh, that's disgusting, Victor. Yeah, you've crossed into the unforgivable for me. If it was for us, you wouldn't have fought me. You are no Madonna. Let her know. You remember your <laughs> <laughs> she <didn't> fight. <laughs> that was funny. No speeches. She said we've had enough. Okay, two on one. You want to go out fighting? Although I don't know if you're gonna, gonna lose this. One down. Pay attention. Do not take your eyes off her, Kate. You know better. Oof, the mask is on. <laughs> We're all like, damn. Oh God, no, they look like fungus. That's disgusting. Oh, Victor, disgust. No, I hate that everyone's getting, be careful. Vander, why do you keep doing this to them? Hi! There goes the hot air balloon. What happened, Victor? So I will convert all those that are willing. What happened to that? That was a great shot. Get away from her sister. Oh, I did not know it did that. The teamwork, baby. You need to get those runes off of her right now. If you can do nothing else, Caitlyn, get those runes off her damn arm. But Madara, she's... Vesta's used to fighting mages, so... Best is a badass. Why are you so evil, girl? Why are you doing this? I need to be able to root for you. You're making it so hard. It is me, and so you and I pursued all our lives. Nope. Just you. Of progress, welcome to the benefit of all. All who? People deserve to choose their own fate. Exactly. Choice is false. Okay, mister, I think it I'm a god. how we clothe and forgive the baser instincts that spur us to division. We can be of one mind. Yeah, unfortunately he's... United. This is why I said this couldn't have been a one-person project, Jace. You needed help. You guys put up a good effort. But Mama is war weary. She's been doing this stuff since before both of you were born. Get it off her arm. Have you figured it out yet, Caitlin? That's right, girl. Let your mama know you're not here to play. You know what to do, Caitlin. You know what to do. You just need to rip that one time. Good. You fought well, child. Yeah, but now you're not protected. Yeah. The necklace. A wolf has no mercy. She ain't a fox anymore. <gasps> Damn, you pushed her to that, Ambessa? For one without the gift, you were quite a thorn. I'm sorry, I can't feel bad for you, Ambessa. She's not gonna let you torture her mama, is he? Even though she should. Doing, sister. Don't call me that. <laughs> She's like, get your chains out of my way, please. Yeah. She's like, you wanna play about, talk about power? 
I see your face, Deceiver. Sly girl. Not my girl taking down two birds with one stone. That's why Mel's the queen. Take off the crown, Ambessa. Hand it over. You lucky your daughter loves you. They're all like, we don't know what just happened. <laughs> Noxie's like, what do we, what do we do? You are the wolf. Always been. Oh, well, it's probably for the best. I'm sorry, girl. I know that's your mama, but honestly, Ambessa was not going to stop. That woman didn't know any other way. I guess you run the Noxians now. Maybe you could send them downstairs because Jace is in trouble. I wonder whether or not Mel's powers work against Victor. It's a different form of arcane. Still don't get it, huh, sis? I'm always with you. Even when we're worlds apart. Aw. Ooh, this, uh, this scene. It's like out of the credits. It's kind of a throwback to the first time they actually got the arcane working. Remember, they were both floating around it. Vander. Not anymore. Vander died. Finally. Victor burned him out. <laughs> This is so twisted that these girls have to fight their dad like this. Not y'all messing up the whole gravity in the place. Oh, the muffled sound is crazy. Careful about where you're shooting things. Where's Echo? These battles are insane right now. Really and truly nuts. That's creepy as shit. Let's not lie, that is not okay. But it looks like you guys are already too late. I don't even think Echo can go back far enough to fix this. See, didn't I say Jace created it? No, not Mel! got his machine. I think he's going to have to push it so far back that it's going to wreck him. Again, I'm going by what I heard about and what I saw in some of the older videos of Echo. Like, he's the one who glitches in and out of time. I feel like he has to go back far enough to stop Victor and that's what... Yeah, see, you made it happen, Jace. But yeah, I'm thinking that's what's got to happen. So Victor's piece is that everybody dies. <laughs> I guess that works. This senseless waste. You want a senseless waste? Is killing humanity. I know their minds. You don't, Chase. actually, at all. They want better lives. And you're the, the one to define that for all of them? With reason. Okay. Humanity. Look at Victor becoming a narcissist. Who'd have thunk it? But you were never broken, Victor. Tell him. There is beauty in imperfections. Preach, Jace. An inseparable piece of everything. I admired about you. Echo's still here, baby! Not teeth! Oh, he's got such a beautiful face. Why would you do that? And he went back and he dodges this time! Yeah, you can see that side of Hextech Digivic. Yeah, you can't go back far enough now. Yeah, that's what I thought. He has to go further back. That's the cost. Oh, Echo. Deal with that new equation, bitch. Didn't count for that, did you? That device can't. Oh, but it does. It is. Arrogant ass. Echo 
baby, please be okay. Oh, what is that? Oh, welcome back. All I want is my partner back. Yeah, I think Victor's gone. After everything I've done. That's what love actually is, bro. Now he sees. Finally. So it was Victor in there, not the arcane. I thought I could bring an end to the world's suffering. Oh, a little piece we never saw. There is no prize to perfection. Oh, you realize Only that after you killed everybody. Pursuit. In all timelines, in all possibilities, only you can show me this. So it was always, that was Victor who gave it to them all those years ago? Loop closed. Yeah, look what you've done. You must go, Jess. Why? You don't do well when you're on your own, Victor. We finish this together. Yeah. Y'all really need each other. It's kind of crazy. This, again, the parallel to the first time they touched the arcane. Victor's trying to hold it together, as he should. Whew. Oh, thank God, my girl Mel's okay. Vander's just gonna die, though. Oh, oh! Oh, oh! The concussions! These were people once. God. Okay, thank God. Jinx hit her head hard. Hi! What are you? I think Vander's dead, bro. You can't save him. Yeah, it's kind of over for him, bye. Believe it or not, it's not your job. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that flashback. God damn, I thought he was dead. Mm. No. This... <gasps> I thought he was going to pierce through her. Okay. No, the parallels of this is crazy. Always with you, sis. Maybe the shimmer will save her. <sighs> Why does Vi always have to lose people? Slaying my head down and rest. If there is no sleep. What a horrible way to remember their dad. I don't think Echo can rewind the, with this one. At least somewhere else, Powder's living happy and normal. Only solace we can take in this one. Damn, that was sad. The exaltation of well, every kind of like the lantern ceremony, but just with paper instead. There's more than one should bear. Carry them forever. Sarik is at the table. It's all she's ever wanted, was to be heard. Worth gaining. Oh. Worth fighting for. Oh God, so it still exists. And Singe daughter. Spark ever more conflicts. Mm. You gonna wear your mama's mask? You gonna be a Madonna now? I feel like it's too big for your face though. But I guess it's kind of her job to take the Noxians home. Kate kind of looks badass with the eye patch, not gonna lie. Is that the top of Jinx's toy? It's singing. It's humming. If you must be. It's just a tune my mother used to hum. Are you still in Listen. this fight? 
Violet. I am the dirt under your nails, Cupcake. Episode title. So did Jason and Victor just cease to exist? I... The end, that flashed very quickly. Who's on that boat? That's it, really? For real, for real? But I have so many questions. Is that really it? Hold on, let me check. So what was this boat? Was that, they were on the, no, that was Caitlin's house. I'm confused. And it doesn't take much, but questions still exist for me. So many questions. Like what happened to Jason Victor? Are they effectively gone? Did they disappear? Did they go to a different timeline? What is happening? We didn't see a body with powder slash jinx. So I'm not believing she's dead yet. All right, let's 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 recap this. This was a lot. There was a lot in this episode. There was so much to take in, but I think that they ended it pretty well in the sense of like, as far as, as well as something can go. And I kept wondering, so do you think it's fair to say that both the timelines that Jace and Heimendinger sla and uh, Echo saw that they all kind of true, but just different periods? That's what I'm thinking. I thought it was an alternate like worlds, but really it was different timelines, right? Because I'm thinking, well, no, it, there were possibilities. Yeah, let me put that. They're both true in my opinion, but they're different possibilities. So the one that Jay saw, unfortunately was the result of him kicking it off, but it's something that has happened before, which I'll get into in a second. Whereas now the one that Echo and Heimerdinger went to, to me is like where Piltover is going and Zon, like maybe 20 years in the future. It's kind of where they're, well, they're, sorry, where they'll be of the war being over and them working together to build a world hex tech free. Obviously, in the one that Echo saw, that there was no hex tech, but you get my point. Like, I feel like both were true just in different times, if that makes sense. So, okay, let's go back to, well, I guess the battle. The battle was insane. That was. <sighs> We gotta give the claps and the snaps to the animation team. Overall, like this series is incredible. This is by far one of the best shows, period. Not just the animations, like the storylines, the characters, the character development, the reasons that people are doing things. Like everything was so well done and written that the whole arc of this show. And then of course, we can't not mention the animation and the camera work and the cinematography. All the people who were involved clearly put their heart and soul in this. Like, I feel like it was worth a very heavy price tag they paid for this. And I'm thinking it's opening the door for a really cool and expansive world that they can tell more stories in. There's so many characters that were introduced in this show who I'm so interested in seeing more about them or seeing a prequel about them. There's just a lot. And that's because the only reason I want to do that and see that is because they did such a good job with these characters, writing them and directing their path. And that's important. Storytelling, is only good when the writers are good and they're allowed to tell their their stories as different and diverse and expansive as they may be. So kudos to Netflix and all the people involved for getting the right people in there and giving them the freedom to tell their stories because that's what happens when you allow people to do their damn job. You know what I'm saying? But anyhow, coming back, the battle was amazing. The sequence was nuts. Like I was literally like clinched. It had me the whole time. I didn't know what to expect from what, but as I said, footnotes of that, Ambessa was such a badass. Like, I'm so mad that she was so blinded by her, her not I was gonna say narcissism, but by her ego, really what it was. It was her ego, her pride in what she believed she was supposed to be. She could have been such an amazing force for better things, but she was just so wrapped up in this identity she had of being, you know, the fox, not the fox, what was it, the, the wolf and, and being the bat, you know, the, like the warmonger and the battle champion. Like there's more to life, Ambessa. And if you had just taken a minute to realize that and put some effort into it, you would have seen that you had that. You had this amazing family. You had this, I don't even know what her nation is, but it sounds like it was a pretty badass nation that not a lot of people messed with. You just could have done so much more. You could have spent this time getting to know your daughter and enjoying her, especially after losing your son. And instead you just doubled down into things that just made your world worse, your situation worse, to the point where you were literally fighting your daughter to the death. I don't think Ambessa would have killed her, to be fair. I don't think Ambessa had it in her to actually kill any of her kids, but like, it shouldn't have come to that. It shouldn't have come to your daughter having to allow the Black Rose to take you 
for you to realize how you messed up. It, it shouldn't have taken her doing that, putting you to the brink of death and then pulling you out before you recognize that she's always been this amazing, strong, brilliant young lady. And I mean, I'm glad at least she did see it in her final moments. I think that's gonna mean the world to Mel in the long run, but just sad that it got to that point because her fighting, her going up there, like I said, you cannot, you can say a lot about Ambessa, but you cannot call her a coward. You cannot call her a punk because she was right there in the front lines with her people using whatever those weird kind of, what would you even call those? That that kind of chain ax thing. I don't even know what the word is for it, but it was amazing. And she definitely knew how to use it. Like she was out there, like the fierce battle queen she's always been. And like I said, like you cannot deny her strength. You cannot uh, deny her determination. You cannot deny the singular focus she can have when it comes to what she believes in. It just was so warped by her pride that it, that's where it went wrong. That's where it got poisoned. The, when she got to the point where human lives became expendable to her, for what? For a reputation? For a for an idea of what a Madarda and the House Madarda is supposed to mean? House Madarda was almost wiped out. Like your greed of letting Victor do what he needed to do almost wiped out everything that you put all this effort into. Like that's how blind she became. And it was just super sad because I do think her heart initially was in the right place, but just all the years of warmongering. And again, I think, as I said, I think last episode, Ambessa's whole identity from what I can see was formed around her as the, the, the general, the, the commander, the chieftain, the war, the warmonger, the weapon champion. She didn't know what else to identify with. She identified more with that than being a mother, even though she loved her children fiercely. So it's just sad. In my opinion, it's utterly, utterly sad. And I don't think she was completely off in the sense of seeing the way the Black Rose was, like when we got to the point where thankfully both um, Caitlyn and and Mel start to fight smart versus hard because it comes to straight up hand to hand, like, <laughs> And Bessa showed them multiple times that they're never going to beat her in a fight, right? She's just got too much experience and she's not like, even though she was older than them, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how Ambessa, how old Ambessa is supposed to be, but look at, you saw her. Woman's still rocking an eight pack and guns the size of my head. Like you are not going to go up against her physically unless you were at her level with combat. But they started to fight smart when they realized those runes that she wears, the ones that she took off of, um, off of Zangief, that was what was keeping her from being affected by the arcane attacks. And so once they got smarter and took that off of her, we see that the Black Rose were able to finally grab her, which they were waiting for their opportunity to do that. And they were, from the looks of things, going to probably torture her for a while and make it a very long and slow death. But we see that thankfully my girl, I love the way she did it too. I love the way Mel just kind of, you know, cut her little way into that weird web. They was like, ah, oh, hi, pardon. Yeah, um, no, 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 it's not going down like that. <laughs> No, you're not gonna kill my mama like that. Sorry, um, I did not go through all that for y'all to kill her. That's not why we did this. And it was interesting because of course the, the girl's like, oh sister, what have you done? What are you doing? And then she tried to use the same chains that she used on Mel that worked for almost a year. And Mel said, oh, the, these, these cute little chains here? Yeah, no, I broke those before, remember? This doesn't work. My power, remember, I'm a mirror. So I can take your power and I can turn it against you. And I love the way she grabbed them and they went from red to gold, color of her magic. So yeah, that girl, that whoever that Black Rose woman was, she overstepped. She clearly forgot how powerful, she's the one who even said to Mel she was powerful, but apparently she forgot. Either way, we see that she said, I see your true face deceiver, but we never got to see who it was and we never heard anything. So I'm wondering who that is, what that's about. There's still a lot of questions around the drama between House Madara and the Black Rose that we still didn't learn. But again, I'm not that mad because this show had so many different storylines to touch that getting into that whole backstory was probably gonna be, like I said, in the last episode, it's enough fodder for a whole spitoff and I'm down for it, please, <laughs> please do one. But digressing. So yeah, she goes in there and rescues her mom, takes her out of there and stops the Black Rose from doing whatever they were planning, which I believe was gonna be pretty awful. And I thought it was interesting that that girl said, you know, despite the fact that you don't have any gifts, you certainly were a thorn. And of course, cause they call themselves the Black Rose. So they were saying that, you know, whatever Ambessa was onto was real, right? What Some of the things that Ambessa said about, I think what Ambessa should have started or maybe started out on this journey with was stopping those with arcane abilities from having absolute power, right? Because that's always dangerous no matter who has it. And I think she started out on a quest of how can we keep the playing field level if we're not arcane users so that mages can't come and just run all over us. But then it turned into, uh, no, we don't want to just 
protect ourselves, we want to squash them, we want to destroy them, we want to subject, subjugate them. And that's where things got, I think, messier, where the Black Rose was concerned, potentially. But we still don't know what started this whole thing. I still want to know what sparked this whole battle in the first place. But anyway, so I do think that Ambessa was onto something about watching them because the fact that the Black Rose said, oh, you were a thorn, like kind of like we didn't think you'd be able to do anything against us because we're magical. It does play into what Ambessa said about mages potentially being problematic and maybe feeling like they're above any level of rules or order or just generally having to respect other people that don't have their gifts. But anyway, so yeah, we see that Mel saves her mom and unfortunately, you know, Ambessa, whatever the Black Rose did to her was already bad enough that she didn't survive it. And so, but yeah, like I said, she managed to tell her daughter in the last minute that she saw her finally for the strength that she always had and that respect, right? Because for Ambessa, strength sadly is the only thing she really recognizes and appreciates and she saw it in her daughter finally. And so that was pretty much it for Ambessa. She, she passed away, but I think she passed the way she probably wanted to in the sense of she went out fighting. She definitely wasn't the kind of person who wanted to grow old in her bed. So yeah, sucks for Mel because she now has no one. That that was her last surviving family member. And as much as, as complicated as their relationship was, she loved her mom and she knows her mom loved her too, even though she was very clearly, ah, uh, very clearly off the beaten path that she should have been on. So anyways, that whole thing happened and, you know, the Noxians basically came to a halt at that point because their leader had died. But I saw, you know, they all recognized Mel as their leader after that because she is the last standing Medarda. And also with that display of power, I think they know <laughs> that she's not the one to be messed with. So that's basically where Mel's at now. Kind of fast forwarding to the end of the of the episode, we see that she's donning her the colors of her country again. She hasn't she hasn't done that. Since season one, she's only worn gold for the most part, but we see at the end, she was wearing the red and the black like her mom. So I'm assuming this means that, you know, now that there's nobody to basically take over the Noxians back in her home, I guess she's gonna be taking that seat. You see that she's holding her mom's mask, very figurative. Like, I think she's gonna have to decide now what kind of a leader she wants to be. Does she wanna follow in her mother's footsteps? Will people rec or, um, respect her and see her as a leader? She doesn't rule by force the way Ambessa did. Or is she going to try to like forge her own path now because she's not the same as her mother in many ways and she's going in as a mage and up until now the Noxians have fought against the Arcane. So what does that mean? I guess is the question because she is still a Madarda. Like there's still Madarda blood flowing through her her veins and even though she's got that, that Arcane, that doesn't change the fact that she grew up this way. So it looks like she's off to her home and we'll see, I guess, I don't know, sorry, I, say, I say we'll see, but the show's over. But yeah, I, I'm very interested, I should say, to see what she's going to do and how she's going to handle that. So that was the whole thing with Mel and Bessa. Great characters. Oh my God, loved them. Loved the battle scenes. Loved everything. Love House Madarda. That's all I got to say. Team Madarda, man. That's me for life. Love those guys. And then in, during the battle, what else happened? So much going on with the battle. Things not going well. Uh, as I said, before all that happened, Ambessa and the Noxians, absolutely, they won. They won purely, well, for two reasons. One, because they had a lot of weapons that were sustaining against the weapons that Piltover had, right? They had a little bit of Hextech in their weapons to help defend against the Hextech that was being shot at them. But outside of that, they also had Victor's weird pod creatures that he created. And we see that they don't move the way humans do. They can fly, they're super strong. So once they started moving around, that was it. Like that there was no saving them at that point. And then on top of that, the fact that Caitlyn, which smartly came up with the idea of trying to destroy the pod that they believe Victor to be in, they were like, that will put a big dent in their plan, right? If, they, if Victor can't get to the hex tech, we're good. Or the hex gate, I should say. But we see that Ambessa, battle strategist, she basically used the army and the bubble that Victor was in as a Trojan horse to get in and also to keep everyone's focus on that rather than really focusing on what else could be going on in, say, the Hexgate room, which Jace went to by himself. Again, that bothers me so much. Why would you send one man into the most important place? Like, there should have been a contingency there. I mean, we know now that Victor would have made quick work of them, but it's not the point. At least if they could have tried, they could have at least gotten all the Hex stuff out of the room or tried to get it out and, and dispersed before Victor would have had time. You know what I'm saying? They could have stalled, is my point, a bit more if maybe Jace had been given a bit of, a bit of time. But yeah, I guess in the end, they just, Victor just, sorry, I should say, um, Jace didn't want anybody else, I guess, to potentially end up being in the crossfire. And that probably would have been the case if they did go down there. But digressing, um, the battle didn't go well. We see that things were going badly. But then at the last minute, we had 
Echo and Jinx show up in the coolest hot air balloon I think I've ever seen <laughs> to come and actually help out with the battle. But actually, I think before we can talk about the two of them showing up, we need to talk about the amazing moments that was in the beginning of this episode of where we see Jinx again trying to reinvent herself. I love the beginning imagery of her with all of her hair laid out, you know, her hair that she's been growing pretty much since the day that Vander died the first time and she cut it all off cut it off you know again symbolism of her kind of cutting off that that girl that person that life and we see that she basically wants to destroy everything that she's ever touched that has contributed to the path she's ended up on right the lab she wanted it to go she burnt down the bar because that was you know reminds her of both vander and silco she you know taking down all of her all of her notes all of her work all of her technology and then she finally built a, a, a grenade I guess you could say a supersonic grenade and it was shaped in the exact same kind of toy that literally kicked us all off in season one of what started this whole ripple effect of a mess. And we see that she wanted to take herself out in the process as well, because she also feels like she's part of the reason. I mean, we also know that she's been very depressed, right? We saw back in act one that when Vi had her dead to rights, she was ready. Like she wasn't even trying to fight in the end. She was like, yeah, it should be you, just end it. Like Jinx has been in a, sadly, a very, sad and desperate place for a long time. And she was to the point where she was like, I just, I can't anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. And so anyways, we see that Echo shows up just in time. And I absolutely love how he kept rewinding the four seconds, <laughs> like literally just like in the hair of time to save himself, but also to save her. And then the way he had to keep very quickly thinking of how to adjust his conversation and adjust what he said to her to figure out what to get her to what to say to get her to not blow them both up and he eventually manages to get her to stop and actually listen and let him talk and i just love that in the end he's like let me just sit here and breathe yo because this, you're working me out girl you are doing too much but anyways it's enough to get her attention because she already knows that this is not the way that her interactions have been with echo for a very long time so yeah i thought that whole sequence was really badass i really love that it kind of showed again that this bond that they still have but just the the way that they did that interaction between the two of them i thought was brilliant but yeah throughout that i mean we didn't get to see anything more than that but my guess is that there wasn't a lot of time so i'm thinking echo probably just gave her the cliff notes of what happened to him and basically it was like if we don't do something we're it's gonna be bad it's gonna be very very bad for everybody so we got to go back and help me help everybody else. And so obviously whatever he said was enough. I think when it comes down to it, the only reason that she did agree to go with him and help him was because she knew that Vi was gonna be in danger and that's her biggest thing, right? How, you know, Jinx is fine with her going, but she doesn't want anything to happen to Vi. And that's the way both of these sisters have always been, right? They're willing to die for each other. So anyway, that's kind of what kicked off the two of them showing up in that hot air balloon and causing all kinds of mayhem. Oh my gosh, all the stuff with Echo was, um, was brilliant. It was so fun. We see that they were actually doing a decent amount of damage for quite a while. But as I mentioned, once Victor's super soldier showed up, that kind of broke everything because yeah, their agility and their speed is next level. And then we see yet another incarnation of Vander um, with this. Now he's got both the Hex Tech and the Shimmer and whatever else. And we saw that when Singe started the whole transformation or whatever, you know, with, as far as pumping whatever he did into Victor and, and everything else, I, the imagery they showed of all the memories that we saw a couple of episodes ago that Victor was actually helping to pull to the forefront for Vander so he could remember himself, we see them being burned away one by one. And so that's why I said that's when effectively Vander did die in that moment. Cause at least when he was still in the original beast mode, he still had that part of himself locked away, but now Victor erased all of it. He made sure there was nothing of Vander left that he would just be a mindless puppet for whatever he wanted him to do. And so that, that again, is just like Victor, mm. Victor, I mean, if you are gone, maybe it's for the best because you have a lot to answer for because that was particularly cruel to do that to him. And as I said in the episode, I'm just so over them bastardizing Vander and his body. Like the desecration is crazy. And the fact that he has, to, he's had to die three times. Like what did Vander do to deserve this? <laughs> he had to die that night in the explosion, almost die. And then he gets brought back and then he almost dies again because he got shot in the face with whatever that gun was that Isha had. And then he gets brought back again, gets shot again by the same. 
I don't know what you did, Vanda. You must have done some really slick stuff in another life because I, I don't know what someone does to desire, um, deserve almost dying three times. That's crazy. And what's even crazier is he's probably still alive. I'm sure if someone goes to the bottom of whatever the hell they fell into and look, they're probably going to find some scraps of Vander and his like literally half carcass, half bone self will still be revivable. Like I'm to this point now, I'm like, bro, let Vander go, please. <laughs> let the man die. But anyhow, um, coming back, they come up against Vander and he's a big problem as well because not only is he the rage monster, but he's got the agility that's been given to him now because of the hex tech. So that's just a crazy battle. And unfortunately the girls having to fight something that has the face of someone they love so much is just twisted and so wrong and heart horrible. And I felt for them so much in that moment, but that's what they had to do. In the end, it was definitely self-defense. You could see they weren't really trying to hurt him as so much as just stop him from hurting them. And while all of that was happening, we had a battle between the other two people who are kind of the crux of this story. You know, it's been between, it's been about Vi and Jinx, but it's also been about Victor and Jace. And we see that Victor shows up in his weird ass new form and he is cocky, he's narcissistic. And he's just basically telling Jace, oh, don't worry, little lamb. I'm going to fix everything and then you'll see that I'm right. I'm not even going to listen to you anymore because you just don't understand because you're too, you're too close minded. That's the reason why. And um, we see that despite Jace doing everything he could to try to dismantle the hex gate, you know, Victor's power is on another, another level. So he, of course, just reassembles it in a matter of seconds. And before they can do anything, we see that they do try to battle it out, but it's not a battle because Victor is not, like he's just, he's so physically superior at this point because of all the mad science that's gone on between what he himself and Singed have done that of course Jace gets defeated. And we see that where Jace ends up with holding his weapon at that particular place, it's literally foreshadowing to what we saw in the, in this episode seven of the future that Jace saw. So like I said, Jace actually kicked all of this off. And I think in that moment when he saw himself or felt himself in that position, he realized, oh crap, <laughs> I, I kicked this off, didn't I? <laughs> This was me. Now, again, that's my assumption. Maybe Victor would have done this anyways, but I really think that the humanity, that Sky version of him would have stopped him from doing this. Or at least, like I said, if Jace could have had a chance to talk to him. And again, we saw later on, which I'll get to, where he touches Jace and he sees that what Jace finally saw. I don't think Victor would have gone through with this. He would have done everything he could have to stop this. But we never got the, to that point because Jace unilaterally decided to destroy Victor and not talk to him and not try to help him see. So anyway, we see that the conversion starts, right? Victor does get to the core. He starts his mass conversion and you know, everyone, all of his little bots are basically able to do what he's doing, which is force them into the conversion, into their evolution as he calls it. And I think it's so interesting that that's what he does. When he told Ambessa at the time of their deal, he's like, when she says, you'll turn my soldiers into you know, people who'll never die. And he says, I'll convert anybody who's willing. So what happened to that between that to now him forcefully converting everyone, right? If you're human, you don't deserve to be, like you can't be a regular human. You gotta be under my control. So anyways, while this is happening, Jace is finally inside of the space where Victor's been operating and he finally gets to talk to Victor. He's like, okay, now I see what you see. Now I'm seeing why you think your way is best. But I love the speech that he gave about imperfections and the perception of perfection that a lot of us have and how it's actually very damning and not at all good for anybody. And I really appreciated the speech that he gave about how Victor always perceived that the things about him that he, I guess, focused on as imperfections, such as his leg and his health condition and all those things. He's like, you looked at those as imperfections, but those are what made you you. Right? He's like, without those things, you wouldn't have become the person that you were. And that's what, you know, that's what we saw. And we never looked at you and only saw those things. We saw you for who you were. And Jace was like, that's what I personally admired about you was the fact that you didn't let these things stop you. And it's such a good, like real life message because so many of us, we fall into a bad pattern of focusing on the things we don't like about ourselves, focusing on what we per perceive to be imperfections, things that make us different. And sometimes we look at it so negatively and that doesn't have to be the case because 
none of us are perfect. Not a single person, even if they have seemingly good health and, and they've got the looks and they've got the money and they've got all these things. I promise you, there are still things that are not okay there. There's always imperfections, there's flaws, but that's okay, right? Like the, what makes us different is what makes us beautiful. And even if you are dealing with something that makes you significantly different, it doesn't have to be a bad thing unless you turn it into a bad thing. In the case of Victor, if he hadn't had those ailments growing up and recognized, grown up in the undercity and seen the different things in his world, he wouldn't have been as, I don't think he would have been a, such a passionate scientist. I don't think he would have had the same drive and conviction to push through and break through and to look for ways to improve and better life and conditions for everybody and to try to push towards leveling the playing ground or leveling the, the playing ground for all the different people there, no matter what their level of abilities were, right? Like he probably wouldn't have been that person. And that's what we should look at is that, you know, a lot of us sometimes look at the adversities we've suffered in life and think that it's what's held us back, but it really is part of what makes us who we are. You know, whatever strengths we do have, what other whatever talents, whatever things that we, we have in our lives that kind of make us shine, a lot of it is due to what we've experienced and what we, we what we are. And truthfully, like, you know, there's expression that says that, that adversity builds character. It really does, if you allow it to. I mean, if you choose to look at the adversity as a woe is me and everything's wrong, well, that's different. But there's a lot of people who have taken the adversity and obstacles in their lives and they've used it to shape themselves to be better. And that's what Victor did initially. But then we see that unfortunately, and I mean, I shouldn't say, the one thing I will say that Jace kind of got wrong in that speech is that Victor's health condition was killing him. Like, unfortunately, his illness was going to cut his life very short. And so I do understand why he got very desperate towards the end. Because as I said, most of us don't want to die, but uh, we certainly don't want to die if we feel like there's so much more we want to do and can accomplish. And in Victor's case, you know, it sounds like he's had uh, basically a, an hourglass on his life from the second he was born because of these illnesses. And so I kind of understand what drove him there. Like, I think he could have lived with the leg forever, but the idea I think for him is that he was so scared that his life was gonna be cut short because of his illness, that that's what pushed, sorry, pushed the desperation. And I'm not, I don't think he was wrong for trying to find a way, if there was any way to help himself. But I think if the desperation hadn't taken over, he would have been smarter about it and he would have been less hasty. And then that we could have avoided a lot of the nasty side effects that Hextech had. But anyways, overall, the speech was really nice and beautiful and kind of like a, a friendship love letter that he was sending off to Victor, of, you know, like, this is like, bro, like you are my brother. Like truthfully, I look at you like my family, like my brother and you've inspired me and I thought you were great just the way you are. And this, this, this drive, this singular focus that you have on perfection is what's making everything, that's, that's what breaks everything in the end. Because even if you make everything the way you're saying, no more conflict, no more war, no more whatever, the price was humanity, right? The price was everyone losing their humanity and becoming husks as we see in the future. And that's not peace. I mean, yeah, it's peaceful, I guess, in the most true sense. Because no one's talking, no one's enjoying, no one's feeling any type of, any joy. Like there's nothing. It's literally just like a, a void. That's what Victor created was a giant void. Which yeah, as I said, if you want to get technical, that's peace. But is that what people wanted? Do you think that anybody would have signed up for that willingly? Is that even what you wanted? Right? So we see that um, it's not really getting through to him though, despite that J Jace is making bare facts, bare points to him. It's not getting through to Victor but an unanticipated, yet another fly in the ointment comes in the, in the shape of Echo. Once again, he did manage to, thanks to his rewind tech, he was able to escape the millions of weird prongs that, that convert everybody from converting him. And we see that he starts heading for Victor because he realizes he's the only one who can stop it at this point because everyone's been plugged in otherwise. And we see that, thank God, because of the rewinding, he's been able, every time he gets caught, he's able to rewind and go back a few seconds and stop that from happening. But we see that it gets to the point where he gets caught by too many hands and there's just no way for him to, to the point where he can barely reach the machine that lets him go back. And then, of course, then he realizes he's been held for so long that even if he rewinds the four seconds, it's just him being held down repeatedly. And I, I feared it. I said, I feel like he's gonna have to push past that four seconds, unfortunately. And the thing is, 
The four seconds, going beyond the four seconds, we saw that it negatively affected Heimerdinger. It didn't do anything to him. We didn't know that that it wouldn't because he didn't want to. He didn't want to try it past that. But I feel like for some reason, because he's the one who's wielding it, he probably could go back as well. I shouldn't say as far as he wants, but I think he could always have gone back further. But the people around him, I feel like people within a certain circumference would probably be in danger if he did that. But anyways, in this particular case, all the things that were surrounding him were effectively dead anyways. So he managed to finally get to his dial and we realize I can't I have to go further back he turns the dial back I don't think we saw how far back but I was like is he gonna go all the way back but I realized he wouldn't have the time to do all of that so he went back at least to before he uh before they get a chance to touch him and he learns that basically he's just got to go high enough the next time to get a straight arc to Victor and that's what he does. And then we see that Victor finally sees him and he does what he has to do. He throws the machine that he created that brought him back at Victor because it's a form of hex that Victor is not familiar with. He's very familiar with the ones in this timeline, but not in the ones that Echo created. And we see, I kind of love the line where he says, this can't exist, <laughs> right? The arrogance right there. That's why I was like, nah, this Victor's gotta go because the narcissism and the arrogance is too much. The God complex is so ugly. And anyway, so him saying, oh, this can't be. It's like, bro, you think you understand all of Hextag because you have one, one little ball of it that you've observed for the past year? I'm gonna need you to calm all the way down. But anyways, I love that he kind of got um, schooled by the student. Once again, one of the, the, the Piltover, or sorry, the Zawn kids that y'all like to look down on, him and Jinx have more in genius between the two of them than all the signs in Piltover, but digressing. So thankfully that is what breaks a little bit of the cocoon that Victor has built around himself to justify what he's doing and what he knows is wrong. And I love the way that they showed it, that they showed it just like the sliver of the old Victor inside of this, this thing that he's wrapped himself in, this persona he's trying to believe that he is. And Jace uses that opportunity to be like, I know my friend is still in there. Like, I'm trying to get you to work with me, please. Like, I want my Victor back. I want our, our partnership back, please. And he gets to Victor and he hugs him. And of course, we know, like I said, that the contact thing for Victor allows him to be able to see into people's minds and memories. And he finally sees what Jace has been through and why Jace is this way and the world that he created by doing what he's doing. And we find out a little tidbit that we did not see in episode seven, which is that the person in the hood, the arcane mage that Jay saw as a child that saved his life all those years ago was in fact Victor from various timelines. I think that's what I'm taking from it. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I'm getting is that Victor has done this multiple times and he couldn't stop himself from doing this in each timeline but Jace was the finally the element he needed because we heard him say something like, in every timeline, I couldn't see the truth. I couldn't see this. You're the only one in every timeline that could help me see. But I guess in every other timeline, he probably was too late. And we also hear Victor say in that futuristic state that he's like, I thought I was creating like peace and I realized that's not what I did. I basically created a void and that's not what I was trying to do. So anyway, we see that, you know, that question that Jace kept asking, why did you give me the crystal? And it looks like it was to just basically remind Jace of kind of why, why he started this journey and what to focus on. And then also it was the linchpin that brought all these timelines back together. And then Victor seeing himself saying what he was gonna say to himself, <laughs> that inception moment kind of woke Victor up to like, oh, I'm actually trying to stop myself. It's not just him, it's not just Jace. I've been trying to stop myself. I've been trying to stop myself. And every time it hasn't worked. And finally, thanks to the, like I said, the, the unknown element, the surprise, the, the flying the ointment, AKA Jinx and Echo, he's finally been able to break, break that cycle. We, we talked about cycles in the last episode, or so, yeah, in the last episode. Here's another cycle, Victor and this hex tech and trying to pursue perfection that doesn't exist. And so thankfully, the break has finally come and we see Victor basically is like, okay, now that I see what I've done, I'm gonna try to fix it and I should do it on my own. He tells Jace to leave, but Jace says, nah, we started this together, we'll end it together. And I, I fully agree with that because Victor is weak. <laughs> Bless him. He's a bit weak when it comes to the power of the, the seductive power of the Hextech. And so is Jace, to be honest. But I think the two of them, the good thing about their partnership is that they kind of always leveled each other out. Both of them kept each other from going too far over a proverbial edge if they work together. For both of them, they both took steps 
in the wrong direction when they would go off on their own. Notice that? Like when they weren't there as each other's checks, that's typically when things would diverge for them. And whenever they work together, they always manage to be enough to keep each other from going too far. So I think it was smart for Jace to want to stay there and be with him and help him. Because it's true, it wasn't all Victor. Like, yes, Victor did the worst towards the end, but Jace was the one who pushed for using Hextech for so many things he shouldn't have when he didn't fully understand it. And so the whole point is both of them have contributed to this point. And so I like that Jace was like, I'm not running away from the accountability. Let's do this together. And we see that he was very much needed because a few times Victor was barely able to pull it back. But between the two of them, they were able to do it. And we see that they were able to pull it back and reverse what Victor had already started with a lot of the other people he was trying to convert. And basically he pulled back all the power out of those weird husk people and um, we see that unfortunately in the Vander sort of in the Vander state of things, it just pulled his control over Vander out, but the beasts still remain. And um, we'll kind of get to that sadly, but oh, actually, let me just talk about it. Unfortunately, because the beasts remain, just the angry feral beast. Yeah, my girl, my girl Jinx, when she realized that if she didn't do something. Vi was gonna end up dying because Vi didn't have it in her to fight Vander again because I didn't even think of the flashback of her seeing Vander on the ground after she'd gone on a rescue mission for him. You know, this is twice now that Vi tried to save her dad and it didn't work. So I understand why she just didn't have it in her emotionally to fight Vander even when he turned into that feral thing. But we see that Jinx had time, like Jinx had more than enough time to save herself. She could have run off. She was okay. She was out of harm's way but she protected her sister. And I love that the theme that she kept repeating in this episode is even though, so even though sometimes we're worlds apart, I'm always with you. And it's true, like Jinx has always felt like she's had Vi's back. It's been that she, Vi that she feels like has not always seen like she's on her, like she hasn't always felt like Vi's had her back, even though it was, really wasn't true. But anyway, point being, it was a very beautiful moment. And her again, saying that she's got her sister's back. I think all that maybe, not even maybe. I also think the other thing that Jinx has been wanting to do since she was a kid was look out for, for Vi once in a while, right? We saw that's the, that's what drove her to going to the warehouse in the first place that caused all this is because she wanted to save everybody. She wanted to be someone who protected versus being protected. And, you know, obviously it didn't work out. And then here she had another opportunity to finally be in a position to protect her, her big, strong, big sister. And unfortunately, because damn, Vanderby extra scrappy. He was, uh, he was able to hold on to her and make sure that uh, if he was going down, she was going with him. So we see that, um, you know, Vi was never gonna let go. Vi would let her arm fall off before she would ever let go of her sister. And we see that Jinx made the decision for her. And basically turned off the gauntlets and went down. And I think she most likely fired the weapon before, but we see, ah, oh, it's actually making me choked up a little bit. The way that she, when she was falling, the look of relief on Jinx's face was super sad to me because she has been tormented for so long. And I think she actually is thinking that no matter what happens now, she's found peace, right? She got to make up with Violet. She got to tell her what she felt. She saw that Violet went out of her way to save her. So she knew that that relationship, that love was still there. She saw that her sister had found someone, was happy. She knew that the people were gonna be okay. She knew that Echo was gonna be okay. So she kind of felt like, I've kind of done all that I can do. So it's like that look of kind of relief and peace on her face and then the tears, because obviously I don't think that she wanted to die, truthfully, truthfully, but, and then to see like the when she looked into Vander's eyes and there's nothing there, right? It's just beast, it's just animal, but still the fact that she, took his face because she's like, even though I know you're not in there, I just got to hold on to this as I'm falling, as we're both falling to what's going to be the end of us or what she believed to be the end of them. And it was just kind of a very bittersweet moment, right? It was beautiful, but it was also incredibly sad because that's just, even though Jinx has definitely earned a lot of not so nice things happening to her, that was a, still a very sad way for her to go. And, you know, she was trying to, I think she would have tried to turn around from that point. I do think she could have, found an equilibrium again, you know, now that things are kind of leveled out. But again, I am not, I am not going to be convinced that she's dead. I didn't see a body. The show's pretty much shown us a body when someone's gone. So until I see a body, I'm believing that she's okay. That girl's got a lot of shimmer in her body, man. She's not your average person. So maybe she's still alive, but I wouldn't be surprised if she, if she did survive her maybe just taking some time and going off her own way for a while 
while she figured things out because she does kind of feel like she's an outsider in Vi's life even now. So anyway, that was that, which was pretty sad, but I just thought we should talk about it while we were talking about it. But coming back, Victor, Jace, they managed to fix what they what they started, at least as far as the people, but we see a lot of the damage was already done from the war and we didn't see anything more of them. We have no idea what happened to them because we know that Jace's body still exists. As far as Victor's, I mean, Victor's was pretty mashed up, so I don't know. But my, I don't know. I don't think either of them is dead. Personally, I think both Victor and Jace are still alive. Where they are, what's happening, I don't know. But they weren't around in our little epilogue there, so I'm not sure what's going on with them. But anyhow, that was kind of what happened with those two. And I think that was pretty much it for the most part, right? That kind of covered the battle and, and the different areas that were fighting. Oh yeah, Maddie turned out to be a traitor. He nearly almost felt sorry for her for getting used by Caitlyn, but no, I'm not, that's fine. She knew what was going on, so she deserved what she got. Um, but yeah, then we saw kind of a flash forward into the future and the war is over. Council's been reestablished. The Noxians have left and we see that the new council that's been established is no longer a Piltover council. It's not a Zon council. It's just a council for, I can't remember the name of the whole world that they're living in, but it's, it's for both of them. And we see Savika, our girl Savika finally has all that she's ever wanted. She just wanted a seat at the table where she would be heard. That's what she's been fighting for for a while. She went about it all the wrong ways, <laughs> but she finally got there. She survived and she managed to, to get there. So I'm happy for her. I think she's gonna be a good representative for the people of Zaun, at least certain aspects anyways, of the people of Zaun in a way that other people couldn't be. So I'm happy that she's there, but we see that it's a mix now of some of the people who stayed in Piltover and a handful of the Zaunites. So that's a good step forward. It's definitely the, the bridge, that's the step forward to the bridge that these guys are gonna need to build to not only fixing all of the damage that this war created, but just also advancing in a way that's healthy for both of them. So, and I think that, you know, Caitlyn being the head of the council is a good thing because she now has literally seen both sides and the best and worst of both sides. So I do think she's gonna be good at staying far more impartial than a lot of other people in her position probably would be. So yeah, I think that's good. And we see that, you know, her and Vi are still together and she's saying that basically things are not done yet. Like they still have a lot of work to do. And she asked if Vi was still with her. She's still in the fight. And I think she's just saying, cause she must know that Vi is definitely grieving her sister. But Vi used the uh, very interesting term of saying that she's the dirt underneath Caitlyn's fingernails. And considering, you know, Caitlyn's top side, you know, she's bottom side. Caitlyn's always shown as pristine and put together where Vi is always grimy and, you know, kind of more gritty. It's a, I think it's an apt, it's a bit harsh. I feel like you're more than just the dirt sis, but I get what she's saying. She's like, you know, I'm, I'm the person who'll get things done. You know, I'm the one who doesn't mind getting a little messy and you're the person who's gonna like keep, keep it, keep it all cute. You know, you're the one who's gonna keep it pristine on the top. So yeah, they, they complement each other well. And I mean, I'm happy for Vi because she's had so many, I mentioned this a couple episodes ago, she's taken so many L's as far as people in her life and losing people. At least now she's finally got someone who seems to be 100% for her and she deserves that. And somebody she doesn't have to worry about, you know, protecting per se in that way. You know, Caitlyn can take care of herself, that's for sure. So that's where we're at, guys. A lot of people, they got kind of everyone scattered, but for the most part, the war is over. The rebuilding efforts are gonna start but uh, there's probably still a few a few remnants here and there that are not quite ready to let go of things. So I think that's what Caitlin was referring to. And also the fact that, you know, there might be other parties that might decide to show up and maybe take advantage of the weakened state of this place. So they definitely have a lot of work ahead of them. Echo is still there, but I think he's gonna have to figure out what he's gonna do with himself now because he doesn't necessarily need the fireflies anymore with the war being over. But I'm thinking that he's gonna wanna continue doing the work that he did before. But yeah, that time that he had in the other dimension or other timeline definitely affected him. So and also not having Jinx when he knows that there was potential there. And I'm not sure what that airship was, was that we saw at the end. Someone please let me know. I have no idea what that was about, but I'm assuming it's something that's probably a wink to something possibly coming in the future. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Jason, Victor, we don't know where they are. They're at large at the moment, but I do think that we're gonna see them come back at some point. We'll have to see when and how. And my girl Mel has gone back to Noxia. Noxia, is it Noxia? I think that's what they call it. But anyway, she's gone back home to, I guess, assume the position of the leader of her family and the leader of her clan. So hopefully she'll find her way back at some point because she did say Piltover was her home, but you know, with the death of her mother, she has to 
take care of those responsibilities or find somebody else to do it for her. So she's not in the immediate picture anymore. And yeah, as far as we know, there is no jinx. But like I said, I just don't believe that. I feel like she's still there, but where she is, what capacity, with that beautiful new pink and blue dye job. We're just gonna have to wait and see if we get to see them again. So yeah, overall, as I said before, this series was fan freaking tastic. I honestly don't have any critiques. I feel like it's, the story was great. I could have easily watched another season of this, but I feel like they wrapped it up in a good way for the focal points of these two, or these four people, I should say, that being Vi, Jinx, and Victor, and Jace. I feel like we got enough of an idea of what this world's all about. We got a lot of character development, even though not everybody was in the forefront of this story. And they definitely planted a lot of really good seeds for future storytelling in different parts of this world. So I am hoping that we get that sooner than later. I'm very much looking forward to whatever next installment they come up with, but it's been fun. I've enjoyed it a lot. What did you guys think of the series overall? Please let me know below if there's anything you would have changed or is there anything else that you think we could have done more with. But I feel like, I feel like we ate well. This was a really, really good series and I enjoyed it a lot. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching along with me and sticking through this whole long <laughs> rambling <laughs> of my review, but there's a lot to cover. But I appreciate you if you did stick around for the whole thing. Please do show some love for this video if you were feeling it. And if this is all you watch from me, then thank you so much for your support and your views. Hopefully you can find something else in my catalog that you can join me on. Like I said, I watch a lot of stuff in this vein. So hopefully you can find something else and join the fam. And for the rest of you, thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video.